Would you turn this evening in the scripture to the book of Galatians? Now, if you didn't bring a Bible with you this evening, we have extra Bibles. Be glad to let you use one of ours. If you'd raise your hand until the ushers can see you and make the effort, turn to the scripture and let your eyes rest upon it. Remind yourself while you're reading it that this is not the words of a man. These are God's words. And uh, take it personally. And in your heart you're saying God's word is God speaking to me today. Amen. Well, we, um, for a number of weeks, were on the subject of being separate from sin. And um, I, believe, I felt like that we got to a place where we could, we could finish and uh, conclude, uh, basically put it on pause for a few months, maybe, you know, because uh, you, you, you haven't covered everything for sure. But having direction also for a new series, and so we'll begin that tonight. Everybody ready to believe God with me on this now? Because you know it's not just all up to the preacher, Amen. right? And uh, we, we are in this together with the real teacher, the Holy Spirit. So uh, I want to begin reading in Galatians chapter 3 and the 7th verse, and we'll read this, and then we'll release faith in prayer further, launch out into the good word. Galatians 3 and verse 7. It says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In you shall all nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Everybody say blessed. blessed. Are we of faith? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Then are we blessed? Yes. Now, you know, faith just accepts what God says, no matter what it looks or feels like. I don't care if you've been the brokest, sickest, Depressed, most depressed, most defeated person in your county. If God says you're blessed, <laughs> you're blessed. Agree with him and things will begin to change. Right? Are you blessed? How you know? Well, you are of faith. Right? And since you are of faith, you are blessed with faithful Abraham. Amen. Everybody say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. With, Abraham. with Abraham. Glory. Glory. <laughs> That's something to get excited about. Yes. Now keep reading. We're blessed with faithful Abraham. Verse 10, For as many as are under the works of the law are under the curse. Now, that's different from being blessed, right? Yeah. Curse. That's the opposite end of the spectrum. Blessed is good. Yeah. Cursed yeah. is bad. Yeah. As many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. Now the two big things he's talking about is trying to be right in the sight of God through what you do, or Believing that you are right in the sight of God because of what Jesus has done. Yes. Two big, 
big differences. Right? Do we still have a problem with uh, in the church world today of people trying to be right through what they do? Trying to be acceptable with God through what they do? Absolutely. You know, I've had people ask me this question. This, I, I don't mean once or twice. I don't know how many times. Especially since I, was, I worked in the healing ministry there with the Hagen ministry for so, for so long. And people had asked me things like this. Brother Keith, my ain't many. Well, first of all, they'd say, I got a question for you. And they'd look at me like, you probably ain't going to get this one. <laughs> I, I got a question for you, Brother Keith. You know, you, they kind of tense up when they say it. Big question. And uh, I said, okay, if I know, I'll tell you. One fellow, I, said, I told him, I said, I can answer all questions. Any question. He looked at me like. I said, often my answer is, I don't know. <laughs> I said, but I can answer any question. And uh, so I said, well, if I know, I'll tell you. They said, well, you know, ain't many. Wonderful woman, you talk about a saint of God. I don't know that there's been a finer saint of God. I mean, visit people and cook and at church every time the doors open and pray night and day. And uh, just sometimes go on for 15 minutes telling me how wonderful ain't many is. And, and then I say, well, we're okay, what's the question? Well, why didn't ain't many get healed? We prayed for her, and she didn't get healed. And sometimes they look shocked when I say, well, what does ain't many being a good person have to do with her getting healed? Amen. Amen. Hello. Are you all with me? Yes. See, what are they trying to say? They're trying to say almost that God owes ain't many a healing. Because she's been such a fine saint of God. God has never owed anybody a healing. Did you hear me? Based on what they have done. But based on what Jesus has done, it's owed to all of us. Now, that's a strong word. Why don't you say that, Brother Keith? Do you remember Luke? About the story about the woman that was bent over? Could in no wise lift up herself when, she, uh, when Jesus saw her, he called her to her, him and said unto her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And, and he reached out and touched her. Immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Yes. And the, the rulers of the synagogue got upset because he had healed on the Sabbath day. They said, There are six days in which men ought to work in them. Therefore come and be healed not on the Sabbath day. He said, You hypocrite. Doth not each one of you loose his ox or ass from the stall, lead him away to the watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? The word ought is a form of the word owed. She ought to be. Not because of what she had done, but because she's a daughter of Abraham. You and I, we just got through reading about it, right? We are the seed of Abraham by faith in Jesus Christ. You ought to be healed. You ought to be blessed. You ought to be, you are blessed. You ought to be enjoying it. Yes. Right? Yes. Ought to be. But not because of what you've done. Hmm? See, this is not just a thing that was happening years ago. This is all the time you run into this. All of our blessings, every promise of God finds its yes and amen in him, in the Lord. He's why we have a right to the blessings. So said, what about what we do in our good works? We'll be rewarded for. Right? But it doesn't buy us a blessing or a healing. Jesus has already bought and paid for all of these things. Yeah, you have to watch about offerings along this line too. I'm going to sow an offering for my healing. Well, what do you mean? Did you hear me? You got to watch that kind of thing. And I'll just leave it at that. I'm on another subject here today. He said, 
Verse 11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it's evident for the just to live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us. From what? From the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. That, in order that, the blessing, the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, do you see the context here? What do you start talking about? Blessing, right? Abraham was blessed, man of faith. And us, through faith in Jesus, we got the blessing, right? You can't be blessed through just trying to do everything right, but we're blessed by our faith in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Then he tells us, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. No more curse of the law for the people of God. We're not as happy about that as we should be. But we're going to be. We're going to get into this. We're going to camp out here. Right? Until we realize how happy we ought to be. It's a bad thing to be cursed. And it's a wonderful thing to be redeemed from the curse. Whoo, glory to God. Redeemed from the curse. Amen. So that's, that's what the new series is about. <laughs> Let's pray right now. We'll believe God for more utterance. Father, we're all here before you tonight, looking to you, listening to you. We say, speak to us, and we'll hear you. Show us what to do. By your grace, we'll do it. Bring us up to the place you've called us to and provided for us. Make us the witness and the blessing that you intended that we should be. Correct us, we'll receive it. Rebuke us, we'll receive it. Teach us, we'll receive it. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen. Amen. Now notice this. He's talking about the blessing, and he's talking about the curse. You know, from, you, you read history, as far back as recorded history, men and women believed in being cursed or being blessed. Almost every society Every culture, every background believed in being blessed or being cursed. I mean, people who don't believe in God. People who who pray to stones and pray to the stars and everything else. They wear uh, charms for protection, right? Which we're not supposed to do, right? (laughs) And they do motions and, and potions and, 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 and get this, this minister, or, you know, I'm, I'm not going to call names so we don't identify these things, but this person or that person, this supposedly holy man or holy woman to bless them and speak over them and blow smoke on them and throw some leaves in their hair and, <laughs> right, or whatever, so that they will not be cursed and so they will be blessed. And uh, today, a whole lot of people would not readily admit that they believe that kind of thing. They believe that they've become too scientific and too educated and too intelligent to believe in such a thing as being cursed or being blessed. But Bible believers have to believe in blessing and curse. Did you hear me? There's no two or three ways about it. The Bible is full of it. We're reading in the New Testament, in the book of Galatians, and he's talking about being cursed, and he's talking about being blessed. And the good news, which is what the gospel is, oh, the good good news, 
is that Christ, the anointed one, has already redeemed us, ransomed us from the curse. Woo! So that the blessing would come on us. Are we cursed? No. Are we blessed? Yes. What does that mean? Does it mean anything? Does it mean see, so to so many people it means nothing? People go, <gasps> chew. And everybody goes, <laughs> and what does that mean? Most of the time, nothing. You could have said Cheerios. It'd mean the <laughs> same thing. <laughs> now, sometimes people may be serious about when they say bless you. They may be. But what I'm saying is for the more part, it is just habit. It is just tradition. But the people of God, you and I, we ought to take the blessing of God seriously. We ought to meditate on it. We ought to think about what does it mean to be blessed. What does it mean not to be cursed? What does it mean? A curse is a real thing. A blessing is a real thing in a person's life. Let me give you some definitions of this. What is a curse? These are definitions, you know, from the, from the Hebrew and the Greek. A curse means to be damned. Now let me just stop right there. It means to be damned, to be doomed, to strike down. I'm not trying to cuss now, so <laughs> listen carefully. Don't let your mind wander. But what it, like, to be cool nowadays and to be popular, you hear a lot of people saying, damn. Usually break it up in a couple of syllables. Damn. Why? Why is that cool? Do you know what I'm talking about or not? In the world, do people think that's cool? If something, if a car is real sharp or a nice clothes or somebody's real good looking, I mean, it's supposed to be cool to lean back and go, damn. need playing games when we come to church. Let's deal with reality. And the reason many times people laugh is because they come to church and they sit up and read, but they'll sit and watch stuff like that and they kind of think it's a little cool too. They do. Or they talk like that when they're not at church. But I want you to think about now, why damn? Because it's one of the favorite words of the God of this world. Why, why isn't it cool to go, blessed? Why, why isn't that cool? Blessed. Why, why isn't that cool? Why has it got to be damn? about it now. I know it sounds funny, but the world is full of damn and hell, right? That's supposed to be cool. I mean, you got to watch cool. So many times when you boil it down, cool is ungodly. And, and think about what you're watching and what, you know, wanting to be like somebody, wanting to look like somebody, wanting to act like somebody, ask this question, are they godly? Are they godly? If they're not, or, you know, maybe you don't know them, but if you've got no reason to think that they're godly, you've never seen anything to demonstrate that they care about being godly, why would you want to be like them? Why would you want to look like them or dress like them or talk like them or act like them? If they don't love God, they don't care about God, they never say anything about God. See, we live in a society that idolizes people who never say anything about God. 
And, and want, they go to church, but they go home and watch their TV and read the magazines and go to the movies, and they want to look like so-and-so and act like so-and-so and talk like so-and-so, and they are ungodly. So what you're saying is, I want to be ungodly. I said, you got to watch. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Why isn't it cool to say blessed? <laughs> huh? Somebody pull up in a new car and you go, blessed. <laughs> why, ain't that, why ain't that cool? Because the God of this world, through all of his varied subtleties, is trying to get damn in your mouth. He wants you to talk damn, which is another way of talking cursed. He wants you to say, cursed this, and that's cursed, and cursed, and hell and damn, and cursed, and cursed. And, and if you talk about God, you want to hook damn with it. So, oh, that's bad. What, what, what's bad about it? What's wrong with it? Because God is not... The cursor, he's not the dammer. He's the blesser. That's what's wrong with it. Hmm? Bless. Everybody say blessed. I'm not damned. I'm not cursed. I'm blessed. Now see, there are a lot of people on the planet that are cursed. A lot of people. If you're not in Christ, you're not blessed. Cursed means damned. It means doomed. Now, now listen, here's, here's a very technical definition, a specific. Dedicated to destruction. Assigned or slated for destruction. If you're cursed, that means you are <laughs> number nine, nine for destruction. You're set up for it, it's set up for you. Now see, people want to try to say they don't believe in these kind of things today. But they may try to talk that, but at night uh, when they're laying on the bed and, and the last five things they did blew up in their face. And they take one step forward and get knocked back three. And the harder they work, the less things work. Hmm? They know something ain't right. And they want to talk about luck. Yeah. I'm just unlucky. Mm-hmm. Ain't no such thing as luck. Right. I, know, I know there's all kind of books written about it and whole cities built on it. But there is no such thing as luck. Luck does not exist. Amen. Amen. Oh, but there's the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Where you start towards it and it just unfolds. You start to do it, and you're going to do one and four happen before you realize what's going on. And favor and, and grace. And you work half as much as they did and get ten times as much. And after a while, it just seems unfair. <laughs> it ain't a matter of fair. You hear, you hear people sometimes say, well, how's life treating you? How's life going to treat you? If you're talking about this world, it'll chew you up and spit you out. (laughs) How's it going? Well, the correct answer for faith life people is (laughs) we're blessed. Man, God's doing good things for us. I mean, this is a standard answer. When people call me on the phone and say, what's going on? I say, good things. Because it is and because I'm expecting it. Right? And that's what happens when you're blessed. When you're blessed, you go day after day and bad things don't happen. You go week after week and bad things don't happen. And good things happen and good things happen and good things happen and good things happen. happen, Not because somebody says, well, well, boy, you must be living right. (laughs) Well, living by faith is living right. And obeying God is living right. But no, don't get talking about what you're doing. Right? right? Let's, let's, let's stay where the, where the Word is and where the truth is. 
we're blessed. Yes. Why are we blessed? Because Christ has redeemed us yes. from the curse. Yes. So, we, so the blessing of Abraham could come on us. Yes. And he did. Yes. And it has. Yes. And we are. Yes. And I am. Yes. Blessed. Yes. Ooh, yeah. This will work. Yes. Y'all believing with me? Yes. Mm-mm. Glory, glory. There's more to it than you just getting out of bed and hitting it hard. Some say, well, if you work hard, if you just if you work hard, that, that's the key to success. No. It takes more than that. There are people that work hard all their life and are broke all their life and miserable. Working four jobs. There's a, there's a principle of diligence in the Word. You're not supposed to be lazy. You are supposed to be diligent. But it takes more than hard work. Right. Well, you've got to know the right people. You've got to have connections. Well, that's true, but not like they're saying. Yes. Right? <laughs> you need to know God. Right. You need to be hooked up with Jesus. Yes. Right? You need to get acquainted with the Holy Spirit yes. and let Him lead you. Ain't need to walk in love with everybody else. But no, it's not like people think. There's more to it than the natural. Some are blessed. Some are cursed. Which one are you? That's what I thought. Now go to Numbers. Correct answer. Go to Numbers if you would. The uh, 22nd chapter, I believe it is. That word's going over in, in our spirits right now. Yes. Blessed, blessed. We're blessed. God's blessed us. Hallelujah. Redeemed from the curse. I'm not cursed. Now, it should not be easy for somebody to convince you that you are cursed. Did you hear that, what I just said? It should not be easy for somebody to convince you that you're cursed. And y'all are believing with me now. You, we've prayed, right? There are some errors in the church right now that we should deal with. It's a subtle way of believing you're cursed. When the Bible says you're blessed, and I'm talking about tongue talking, tape playing, meeting going people. And they called it a lot of stuff, and they go through a lot of stuff, but the final analysis is they believe they're cursed. Well, I'm trying to get free, Brother Keith, from curses, from generational curses. How are you going to get free? Well, if I can find a, a person that's anointed enough. So you mean Jesus wasn't? Hello. I'm not trying to be smart. This is, this is serious. What these people are doing are walking by sight. And they've taken uh, modern psychology. Did you hear me? And they've tried to mix it with the word. And all this delving into one's past. Trying to find this. Trying to find that. Trying to find the other. Did this say Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Except for those pesky generational curses. And you'll require substantial discernment and anointing for those. Help us, Lord. <laughs> you're either blessed or you're cursed. Come on now, you're going to see this stronger and stronger as we go along. And the thing is, you don't accept one or the other based on how you feel or how it looks or what you or mama or sis or grandma have experienced. This is by 
faith. And if he says I'm blessed, then what do you say? I'm blessed. I'm blessed, period. Yeah, but no buts. I'm blessed. Yeah, but what about all these curses? I'm not cursed. Christ has redeemed me from the curse. I'm not cursed. Yeah, but what about other? Listen, I'm not cursed. I am blessed. Period. Yeah, but now, brother, no buts. Come back to the scripture. Come back to the verse. Blessed or cursed, you can't be both. And if what the Lord has done is not enough to get you free from the curse, then you ain't getting free. No amount of intercession, no amount of prayer, no amount of going to meetings, no amount of psychoanalysis is going to do it if Jesus' blood didn't do it. But if he has done it, then it's done. Hmm? So I said, well, why, why do I still feel the way? Because you don't believe it. You got to believe it. Right? Before you see it, before you feel it, you got to believe it and say it and say it and believe it and believe it and say it and say it and believe it. And when you're slapped with something that looks like it's just staring you down saying, you're cursed. Look at you. Feel that. You say, no, in Jesus' name, I've been redeemed from the curse. The Lord has redeemed me from the curse. I am blessed. How many know about a man or a woman that will do that day after day, no matter what they feel or see or anybody says, what's going to happen to them? They're coming out. They have to come out. It is written. They have to come out. <laughs> Said out loud, I am not cursed. I'm blessed. Now, Numbers 22. The children of Israel set forward. Are you there, Numbers 22? And they pitched in the plains of Moab on this side, Jordan, by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all, it, all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people, people of God, because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. He, he knows that they are a big number, and the, something's on them. <laughs> they just wade through the enemy. They just wipe out the enemy, and none of them die. Now, see, these people believed in blessing and cursing, for they got educated beyond their intelligence. They knew some things just are beyond natural explanation as to how that worked. Right? So what's their solution? We're outnumbered. We're not in covenant with God. What can we do? Stop the mighty force of these people of God. Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us as the ox licks up the grass of the field. Is this what the devil is afraid we're going to do? <laughs> and his fears are justified. <laughs> we're going to lick up all the blessings and all the stuff like a cow eats up all the grass. <laughs> Somebody say chonk chonk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that scares the devil. <laughs> we have begun on a very small level, but we've begun. Let's eat up some more. He sent messengers, therefore, to Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him. He said, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth. And they abide over against me. Is there supposed to be a lot of us? Yes. I mean a bunch of us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We show up for some. You know, we, we got a little taste of that on this last election. Yeah. <laughs> a number of us showed up and voted. Yeah. 
And the ungodly folk were like, what? <laughs> what happened? Amen. Glory to God. There's supposed to be a lot of us. Yes. And if we're supposed to move like one man. Yes. Unity. Yes. If something we don't like, we show up. Yes. All of us. Yes. <laughs> and the people just take one look at us and go, okay, we'll change that law. <laughs> right? Yes. But the devil has wanted us to believe that there's not many of us, that we're outnumbered and we're just in a minority and we can't say or do anything. It's a lie. Right. There are multiplied millions of us all over the place. And the biggest thing is God is with us. <laughs> That's irresistible. The devil knows that. He's afraid of that. And that's why he works, and you'll see the same kind of thing he works today to cause splintering and division, strife, to keep that from happening. So verse 6, now look. Balak sends to this man named Balaam. You ever heard of Balaam? You should have been reading about Balaam just recently. Huh? How many was reading about Balaam just recently, not long ago? Boy, that's not enough. In our chapters, you know, we, we, we read about Balaam. Loved the wages of unrighteousness. That's why he's in the Bible. Boy, that's bad, isn't it? An example of covetousness. He said, come now, therefore, I pray you and do what? Curse me this people. For they are too mighty for me, peradventure I shall prevail, and we may smite them, and I drive them out of the land. For I what? What means no. I know that he whom you blessed is blessed, and he whom you cursed is cursed. He had a reputation that if he blessed you, then you were blessed. And if he cursed you, you're cursed. Is this real? Yes. Blessing and cursing. Is it real in the earth? Yes. Or is it just superstition? No. We're not reading the first book of superstitions. No. This is the Bible. Yes. Right? Yes. This is a fact. Yes. And see, these people, they weren't even worshipers of God. But they knew about this guy. He had a reputation. And so he's the king sent for him. Wanting him to curse the people of God that God had just brought out of Egyptian bondage and across the Red Sea. Wanting him to curse them. Because he said, if you'll curse them, I can whip them. If you curse them, we can, we can conquer them and drive them out of the land if they're cursed. Now, now, that's faith. Think about it. Here is an army that is superior to yours in size and might and ability. And he's not even a man of God. But he believes that if he can get the blessing off of them and get them cursed, he can whoop them. He had more faith in the blessing and curses than many Christians today. He said, come, come curse them for me. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. That's money, jewelry, gold. And they came to Balaam and they spoke to him the words of Balak. And he said to them, won't you stay here tonight and I'll bring you word again as the Lord will speak to me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came to Balaam in the night and said what men are these here with you Balaam said to God it's Balak the son of Zippor king of Moab he sent these guys to me and he said behold there's a people come out of Egypt which covers the face of the earth come now and curse me them peradventure I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out and God said to Balaam you shall not go with them you shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. 
How many know this is the final answer? This is the final. When God says, you ain't going to curse them because I have blessed them. Who can top that? Who can supersede that? Is there a witch big enough that could trump that? Are there a hundred warlocks that could get together with 500 witches and have a big meeting and overcome that? Hmm? The answer is no. No, no, never no. No way, no how, no. Then why? Have, I don't mean one, I don't mean two, I don't mean four or five. Over the years, Christians that have come to me in a panic, full of fear. You can see it in their eyes, you can hear it in their voice. Brother Keith, I think so. I think a witch moved in over me in the apartment above me. I think, Brother Keith, I, I think that uh, the, these people have been meeting in town and I think they, they put a curse on my church. No, my pastors, pastors, scared. Why, would, why should you be scared? Our people? Oh, why? They fear the curse. They, what, what, what does that mean? What is a curse? You're marked for destruction. Destined to be doomed, to fail, to be destroyed. Well, if God has marked you for success empowered you to prosper and succeed then who can come behind him and say no 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 X out what God said no no X that out no I know God said that but I'm a witch and I have power of the dark one (laughs) it is laughable to people who know the truth But see, here's the reason. I don't care if somebody stayed up all night, three nights in a row, and killed four goats and three roosters, (laughs) and painted the floor and burned incense to curse you. The only way it could affect you as a child of God is if you fear it. If you fear it, because fear is faith in it. If you fear them and fear it, then you are believing in its power to hurt you, which opens up your life to it. Brother Kenneth Hagin, my spiritual father in the faith, years ago he was preaching at a place and he had gotten on some things about the prophet's ministry and prophetesses and, and which he knew something about it. And he had said some things that apparently some people didn't like. And uh, one fellow came to him after the service, minister, called him aside and said, Brother Hagin, oh, Brother Hagin, uh, don't you know that prophetess so-and-so was here? And man, she didn't like what you said. Don't you know that she'll curse you? <laughs> Boy, now that's a shining example of a representative of God going around cursing people. She'll curse you. And Brother Hagin, she cursed some other people here in town. And two of them died. He reared back to my Brother Hagin. He said, I double dog dare her to curse me. What do you hear in that? You hear no fear, not, not a shred of fear, which means not a shred of faith in it. Right? right. right? Which means they have no place. The Bible said neither give place to the devil. So with no fear means you're not giving any place. 
<laughs> Keep reading. God said to Balaam, you shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. Nobody's word is bigger than God's word. And Balaam rose up in the morning and said to the princes of Balak, Get you to your land, for the Lord refuses to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us, which is exactly what he should have done. Right? When the Lord tells you, don't go. Don't curse, because I'm blessed. What do you do? You stay home, if you've got any sense. Balak sent yet again princes more and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and they said to him, Thus says Balak the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray you, hinder you from coming to me. For I will promote you to very great honor. And I will do whatever you say to me. What's he saying? I will pay any price. Isn't that right? You see, we talked about this in the offering, didn't we? Has he already heard from God? Then is there anything complicated about this? Anything confusing? This guy has just upped the price. We'll double it. We'll triple it. We'll quadruple. Name your price. What do you, you you want $500,000? We'll do it. You want three million? He's a king. Now you understand he's got resources. You want 10 million? I can do it. We'll have it wired to your account. Sometimes people say, oh man, the pressure. Whew, what pressure? <laughs> Why is there any pressure? Oh, come on now, are y'all with me tonight? <laughs> oh man, I just, I'm under so much pressure. Why would you be under any pressure? God's already told you what to do. Right? Right? The amount changes nothing. If you get confused, you're confusing yourself. It's because the lust of your flesh is stirring up. And now instead of thinking about what God told you, you're thinking about what you could do with that 10 million. And how you could live for the rest of your life. And how you could buy you a, that, that vacation place down in Hawaii. Hmm? And how you could lay out on the beach every uh, afternoon and drink your little drinks with the umbrellas. <laughs> and how you could have that new, that new car. And how you could do this, now you could do that. See, you, you, you. Frizz, let, let me help you with this now. Don't let your mind take off down a trail planning something you shouldn't even be thinking about. I don't know at the times. Talking with people and trying to work on deals. And maybe, you know, Phyllis and I are looking with somebody for a house or something and, and they walk up and nobody's prayed, nobody's heard from God. And we're just starting on this deal and they're already moving furniture. And decorating rooms and, and doing this or that. And, and think about that and just meditate on that night and day for the next three weeks. And haven't even got it straight whether it's the house or not. Yeah. You see what I'm talking about now? This is what gets people into trouble. And it's what makes it hard on them. And they go, well, I, yeah, but I've put so much thought into this. Yeah, but you shouldn't have put any thought into it. Yeah, but I've made so many plans and I've spent so much money. It's because you weren't led, you weren't listening. And you make it hard on yourself. And, and they, you know, they've been dating somebody for six months and, 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 and they realize the Lord told them they're not the one. And they're so heartbroken and so tore up because they've gotten so close because they've bared their heart and just shared everything with each other. And well, this is so hard. It's not supposed to be. It didn't have to be. You never should have got that close. Did you hear me? Oh, friend, we can save ourselves so much trouble. But when your mind starts to take off on the track, you just go, whoa, whoa, where are you going? 
Wait, come, come back here. Right. We ain't heard from God. Right. Yeah, but I want to think about it and fantasize about it and, and make my plan. No, you don't. You shut up. Amen. You calm down. Yeah. We have not heard from the Lord about this, so we're not ready to make any of these plans. Amen. Oh, are y'all with me, guys? This is important. Keep reading. Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, verse 18, if Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, and he had a big house, he's a king, yeah. I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Amen. Good answer. Good answer. Then why is he in the New Testament for being an example of covetousness? He didn't stay where he is right now. He did what you and I were just talking about. He got to thinking about that money. He got to thinking about it. And, of course, you know, it's just like uh, Adam and Eve. And the Lord told them, don't eat of the forbidden fruit. The next thing you know, they're hanging out there at the tree. Right? Eve's looking at the tree. And when, and when you do that, you have opened the door for the enemy to talk to you. And he's going to come and talk to you and say, now look at that fruit. How can anything look that good be wrong or be bad? Who made that tree? God made that tree? I mean, it's just natural. And the reasoning and the reasoning and the pulling on the lust of the eyes and the flesh. Well, see, that's what happened with him. He got to thinking about that money. Verse 19, he says, Now therefore I pray you tarry here this night that I may know what the Lord will say to me more. <laughs> now why do that? He said, But now you know, y'all just stay the night. And let me talk to the Lord again about this. <laughs> and God came to Balaam at night and said to him, if the men come to call, you rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say to you, that shall you do. Okay. So Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went. Now let's just stop right here. What's, well, I thought he told him uh, to go. No, he said if they come in the morning. And they ask for you to go. Well, Balaam was wanting to go so bad, and he's wanting that money so much, he didn't wait for anything. He packed his stuff, he got his donkey loaded, and he just went. And you know the story of the first talking donkey <laughs> on record. <laughs> we won't go through that, but that's a, that's a wonderful story. <laughs> And verse 36, skip on down, verse 36, when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him to a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said to Balaam, did I not earnestly send to you and to call you? Why did you not come to me? Of course, he's a king. He's used to when he calls, people jump. Right? And he said, I called you, I told you to come. And I told you how I'd pay you. Why didn't you come? He said, am I not able indeed to promote you to honor? Balaam said to Balak, lo, I am come to you. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God puts in my mouth, that shall I speak. And if you skip on down to 23, let's keep reading this. Balaam said to Balak, build me here seven altars and, and prepare me seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said. He offered on every altar a bull and a ram. Balaam said to Balak, you stand over there by the offering and I'll go and perhaps the Lord will come and meet me and whatever he shows me, I'll tell you. God met Balaam and he said to him, I prepared seven altars and I've offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. The Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, return to Balaam, Balak, and this is what you'll say. So he came, and he took up the parable. In verse 8, how shall I curse whom God has not cursed? 
Or how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? From the top of the rocks I see him, from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone and not be reckoned among the nations. Now, you know what that means? They're going to live in this whole land by themselves and not have any neighbors. (laughs) Well, where are these guys going to be? (laughs) Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? He said, who could count uh, 25% of them? Let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his. That's not exactly a curse, no. Balak said to Balaam, what have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemies and look, you blessed them all together. (laughs) He answered and said, must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord has put in my mouth? Balak said, well, come over here to another place. (laughs) <laughs> and then basically see if you can curse them from over there. <laughs> and verse 16, the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth. He said, go again to Balak and say this. So he went. And he said, verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie. No, see, this is oft quoted, isn't it? Yeah. But what, what's it in connection with? What does it mean God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent? Has he not said it? Shall he not do it? Has he not spoken? Shall he not make it good? Let's keep it in context. What's he talking about? He's blessed them. Right? And he's not going to change. And nobody else can change it. And then he said, I blessed you, and will he not do it? He said, you are blessed, and nobody can curse you. Will he not make it good? Yes, he will. Behold, verse 20, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. And he was an expert cursor. I dare say Balaam could outcurse any 40 modern day witches put together. Balaam was an expert cursor. He was known internationally. If you want somebody cursed, call Balaam. Balaam put the hex on them, they are done. If they were so convinced of it, this king is willing to pay any amount of money to get him to curse them. Our curse is real. Yeah. And when one is cursed, what happens? They're marked. They're destined for destruction. Destruction, pain, hurt, harm, loss. Are we cursed? No, we're not. We're blessed. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. As it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, in order that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. We might receive the promise of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abraham was blessed of God. I mean, you see him, and next thing you know, he's rich. Next thing you know, he's really rich. Next thing you know, he's so rich that there's not enough room, there's not enough land where he lives to feed all his livestock. Blessed beyond measure. Blessed overflow. Blessed. Couldn't, couldn't have a child, wife couldn't conceive, but 99 and 90, she conceived. They had the promised child. Hallelujah. Nothing in his heart that he desired that he did without. Live like a king. Yes. Healthy, peaceful, blessed, yes. respected, yes. honored. Yes. Blessed, blessed, blessed. The same blessing that was on him is yours. It is written. If you are of faith, you are blessed with him. Same blessing. Same blessing. Same blessing. blessing. Armies came and attacked some of his kinfolks. He took his 
hired hands, his employees and some of his neighbors and went and took them back. We're talking about national armies now. And he, he, he told all his employees, he said, uh, y'all put your armor on. We're talking about gardeners and, and ox drivers and, and pea pickers. <laughs> he said, get your stuff, get your stuff. And then he sent word to some of his neighbors. He said, you know, how about y'all come join me with this? And they showed up and took away and defeated these armies. Oh, what a blessed man can do. A blessed man can do what a nation can't do. Hmm. Blessed woman can do what a whole community can't do. Whole state can't do. Glory to God. Am I talking to some blessed people? Blessed. Blessed. Empowered to prosper. Marked for success. Marked by God. Destined for success. Predetermined for victory. That's me. That's you. That's why we keep winning. And we just win and we win. And we just win and we win and we win. And we miss disaster and we miss it and we miss this accident and miss this problem and miss this and miss this. Don't get this and don't have that. Bad thing happened. Redeemed from the curse. Amen. Blessed. <laughs> Does it help you to hear about it and talk about it? Think of oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to finish this up. God is not a man that he should lie. About what? Let's keep it in context now. Keep it right in here. What's he talking about? about? God's not a man that he should lie. About the fact that we are blessed and nobody can change it. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Shall he not do it? Has he spoken? Shall he not make it good? Make what good? The blessing. Behold, I have received commandment to bless and he has blessed and I cannot. Reverse it. He wanted to. Yeah. He trusts. Why well, he kept going from place to place? I mean, nobody thinking right would do that. <laughs> well, let's offer all these sacrifices here. God said, I said no. <laughs> okay, well, let's go over here on the south side and put up an altar. And what about, what about it? God, he said, I told you no. I have blessed them and they cannot be cursed. Well, well, and the king says, why don't we try it over here on the east side? And we'll see. see, they kept it quiet. He wanted the money. He has not held iniquity in Jacob, neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt, and he has, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely... There is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you know these are different words for, for Abraham's seed, right? Does this apply to us? Yes. Have we been redeemed from the curse? Yes. Is the blessing of Abraham that came on Jacob and Israel, is it, uh, is it ours? Yes. Is it on us? Yes. Can we receive this personally then, yes. based on what Galatians 3 says? Yes. Is there any enchantment that can work against us and take the blessing of God off of us and make us cursed? No. There's no enchantment. Never has been, never will be. There is no divination. And we're called the Israel of God in the New Testament. Now let me deal with something else here. Fireworks. Is what you're hearing. Uh, you thought I changed subjects, huh? <laughs> Are there Christian people Charismatic people, word of faith people, that are tonight, different places around the world, that are very concerned and upset 
about curses in their life. Yes. Yes. Many. Many. Curses. Let me, let me share with you this, this thing. Is the enemy is so subtle. Phyllis and I have talked about this a number of times the last year or two. You hear people, you hear it out of preachers all the time. They started a new project in the church, a new outreach, or a new vision to reach people for God, and, and they had a problem, and then they had another problem, and then they had another problem, and then they had another problem, and every time you talk to them about it, they say, man, yeah, we stepped out for God. And when we did, whew, man, the devil is letting us have it because we stepped out for God. No. You ever heard that? Yeah. <laughs> like every other day. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing it. I'm weary of hearing it. Because it's distortion. See, analyze that now. What are they saying? Well, our truck broke down, and we had a short in electricity, and half burnt the bathroom up, and so and so the first day they started. They got sick and was sick for two weeks. What is all that? Is that blessing? No. That's curse. And then they turn around and say, I guess it's because we obey in God, because we stepped out to do what the Lord told us to. So what are, what are you saying when you put those together? Because I stepped out to obey God, I'm cursed. I yeah. said, yeah, but now, Brother Keith, I've seen it happen. I know you have. But do you know why? When people are saying... Man, it's just been one thing after another, Brother Keith, just one thing after another, one thing after another. Do they believe that? And what are they expecting at this point? More of the same. They're in faith for it. Do you see this? <laughs> some people do, some people don't know if they want to see it or not. <laughs> Don't take my word for it. Now get in the Bible. Where did you see where it says, if you step out and obey God, you will be cursed? Somebody said, well, what about some resistance, Brother Keith? Yeah. But where there's resistance, God's grace much more abounds. There is no justification. For this defeatist attitude. And it's a form of spiritual pride. That what I am doing for God is so special. <laughs> that I think, methinks, half of hell has been assigned to me. Because our mission is really so much holier and so much more important than what all these other people are doing. I mean, here's a church over there that's a hundred times my size and they're always just smiling and blessing and going big guns for God. But what I'm doing here is really more important in the kingdom of God But look at the bottom line. The bottom line is you believe a curse is on you because yeah, right. you stepped out to obey God. That's a lie. Amen. It's one of the devil's subtleties. Oh, he, he wished I wouldn't tell you this tonight, but I already have. God already has. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, he, he, he's worked hard on this one. He's got this one woven in the fabric of charismatic and word of faith people. They, they don't think anything about saying it, you know. 
I've heard preachers, preachers, sit down, they get to talking together, and you go, yeah, man, dear Lord, I mean, we started that new building project, and I mean, all hell broke loose, and everybody go, yeah, man, I know it, don't I know it, you step out to obey God, and, and what, and what, the devil can just waltz in and curse, 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 curse. No. We're not, going, we're not going to get into it necessarily tonight to the detail, but we're going to go back and we're going to read Scripture after Scripture after Scripture where it says, Obey and you'll be blessed. Yes. Disobey and you'll be cursed. And the devil has tried to convince us, not talking about some other group, us, you and me, that obey and you'll be cursed. It's a lie. I don't believe it. I don't accept it. When you step up to obey God, you can look forward to blessing. You can look forward to grace upon grace upon grace. What if the devil tries to stop you? Well, he ain't bigger than God. If God is for you, who can be against you? What can he do against the Almighty? How can he curse whom God has blessed? <laughs> he cannot. Uh, some of you are going to have to think about that one a while. I know that you are because you have talked it so long. It's an excuse. I said it's an excuse. And it's a lie. And we don't believe it anymore. Hmm, is that right? Is that okay? <laughs> Whew, go with me in closing to Proverbs 26. Something you can stand on. <laughs> Boy, I could just sense in my spirit what a deal that is. To so many folks. Yeah, there's all kind of people that have not obeyed God. Because they are afraid of what might happen. Man, I don't want to be on the front lines. Boy, you get shot at. And there's been all kind of preaching that's been solical. And people are preaching what they're going through. Instead of the word. And nobody stops to think, did they have to go through that? Did you hear me? Nobody stops to think about that. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Boy, it's a long, hard way. Yeah. But y'all just we pray that we'll hold out. I mean... <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Christians, you come up and say, glory to God, me and the wife and our five kids, we're going to Africa. God's called us to go. I'm not talking about people from other denominations. People are supposed to be faith people to go, oh, well, praise God. You're going to need some prayer. <laughs> Bless your heart. Nobody's told them. They can be a multimillionaire. Yeah. Oh, that's too weak. That's too weak. <laughs> so people don't believe it. They can be rich, rich, rich yeah. on the mission field. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. They can live disease free. Their children can live yeah. disease free. They can be the happiest they've ever been. Yeah. Right in the middle of the worst situations. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That has not been preached. No. No. Never. And that is the truth. That is the truth. You do not have to be broke. You do not have to whine. You do not have to beg because you're a missionary to another country. You can be blessed, blessed. You can be powerful. You can be God intends for you to move in there and be the most influential man and woman in the country. So that people respect you and your word carries weight and you use your influence for God. Like Job. Yeah. 
You might say, yeah, but now look what happened to Job. <laughs> Brother Keith. Good point. What happened to him? Now let's back up. Let's back up. Why did all this bad stuff happen? What happened to him? He got into fear. Is that right? And he kept saying, making these sacrifices every day and going, man, I don't know what my kids are out there doing. Ain't no telling what kind of stuff they're into. Maybe one of them's cursed God. Hey, they're having them parties over there at their house. Ain't no telling somebody. They might have got into some witchcraft. Fear. Fear. And dread. And then eventually, what did he say? The thing that I greatly feared has come on me. Fear is a terrible thing. It literally opens the door to destruction in your life. It's just like believing God for a miracle and a good thing. You turn around and through fear, you're believing the devil for a bad thing. But not us. I said, not us. We're blessed. <laughs> We're blessed. God has blessed us. There is no enchantment against us. There is no divination against us. And how can you curse whom God has blessed? You can't. You can't. You can't. And here is a, a law in the scripture. And I think we'll, we'll put it on pause here. Proverbs 26. Are you there? Proverbs 26. Verse 2. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless, what? Shall not come. Shall not come. Now let's just stop right here. Was there a curse sent? Yes. Yes. Must have been. Why talk about it? Listen to the Amplified. Like a sparrow in her wandering, like a swallow in her flying, so the causeless curse does not alight. It doesn't light. Like a fluttering sparrow. Well, let, let, me, uh, let me read the living, rather. An undeserved curse has no effect. Its intended victim will be no more harmed by it than by a sparrow or a swallow flitting through the sky. It shall not come. Shall not come. You look at other scripture and it talks about how that he that rolls a stone, it'll be rolled on him. He that digs a pit, he'll fall therein. Amen. And there is a principle of what you sow, you reap. And those who sow curses and sin curses toward those who are blessed of God and have no fear, you know what happens? Boomerang. Yep. Yep. That's why Brother Hagin was saying, I double dog dare her <laughs> to curse me. Why? She better make it to fit her. She better make it her size because she's going to wear it because it can't land on me. It can't light on me. Oh, did you get this now? What? When you know you're the blessed of God, it can't light on you. Just like a little sparrow or a swallow flying around, just keep flying and flying, it won't light. It comes by, but it's zoop. Boy, did you know they, uh, they all bonded up and they worked and, and they cursed and they cursed for three weeks and they cursed you. Oh, was that what that was? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hope they enjoyed it. Because that's all I'm going to know about it. The curse costless shall not come. 